Thanks for joining us here in Geneva for the AI for Good Global Summit 2018. My next guest is Renato De Castro. He's a smart city expert. Hi, Charlotte. Thank you very yeah. much for joining us. Great pleasure. So smart cities, it's, it's a movement. So how does AI fit in with your vision? Yeah, well, uh, smart city, first of all, is not just the use of technology, but uh, this is, it's a, uh, well, society is evolving to, to a new perspective of economy. We're talking about the creative economy, sharing economy, circular economy, the process of co-creation. Embedding AI uh, on this process can really empower citizens to have uh, a more active voice in, in, the, in the decisions of the city. So I think that, th that is the core point that we've been discussing here in this event. And can you share concrete examples with us, for instance? Yeah, it, well, we came, we came with a new concept yesterday during the track of smart cities that there are a lot of space now for what we are calling empowerment as a service. It's exactly, the, well, use technology to create apps to give more opportunity for, 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 for people and also to save or to solve very important problems. We, we saw, for example, a project yesterday uh, for gender abuse and they, they are doing there in, in South Africa. So uh, the women, they have this app that, that, that not only, it's a, like a chat boat that, that uh, talk to them when they have this kind of problem and help them to identify or to clarify that this is exactly a problem because in some cultures the abuse can also be misunderstood in a different ways so it's cultural but abuse we have already a global understanding about this so the chatbot the artificial intelligence is helping women to to, to get aware about this problem and also to report the problem because ai is on the one of the different sets of technologies you can be using to deliver this smart city vision. There are plenty and they all have to converge and get together to basically make people's, li make people's lives easier, right? Yeah, well, uh, I have a, I, I say, romantic definition about smart cities because there are a lot of technical definitions. And I, uh, well, my, my opinion is smart city or under the perspective of the city, smart city are places where everything seems to be conspiring to make your life better. Mm -hmm. You even don't need to understand what is behind, what, 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 are, what are the technologies being used, but you feel that your life is better than it was before, and, and that is a smart city. Yeah, and well, uh, talking about the technologies, it's not just AI, but we have blockchain now being applied also uh, uh, for a smart city. Well, all the concepts of machine learning, Machines can help us to structure better our, our, our lives and mainly to find the patterns in data that we are creating in order to, to solve problems. We are forecasting from 2015 to 2020, 370,000 people will migrate daily. So this will, become, this will potentialize all the, all the urban problems that we have. And in the other way, we also are uh, forecasting that by 2020, we are going to have almost uh, 50 billion connections, 50 billion things and people connected. In 2008, the number of connected things uh, already bypassed the number of, of connected people. So how to put everything together to make our life better? I think th th that was the, the, the goal of yesterday in our, in our track. You've touched upon an important aspect of smart cities as well, and it's trust, because you've mentioned sensors and data gathering. Smart cities, yes, but it has to be done with the engagement and the consent of citizens, hasn't it? That's important. Definitely, and uh, there is a very important discussion about how to rule it, how to create, the, to create the standards to make this, because at the end of the day, all the data are online, and they are related to our geographical area called cities, but they are available to everyone. So we need to start having some global standards and that that's the, is exactly the right house to be discussing about this ITU because well ITU understand what's happening in the, in, in the world as a, a, a big picture so and and ITU has come yesterday with a very interesting project in our track uh, about the KPIs for smart cities so how to how to analyze uh, if you, the projects that you call smart cities are bringing really r real results or social impact or real impact for, for, for the citizens and for the economy. So that's why it's important for someone like you to be here at a multi-stakeholder platform, not just to share ideas and meet people, but to actually come up with creative and innovative solutions uh, on the ground. 
I'm very honored to be here, and I, I, if I have to define myself uh, or my role on, uh, in this process, maybe I'm trying to be the one in the middle of the stakeholders translating different language, political language to citizen's language to well, private sector language, who, is, who should be doing smart cities, not the, the governmental money, but also the private sector, because at the end of the day, cities are cities, are, are markets, so the PPPs and all these, these uh, tools that we're using now is very important to attract investments to, to smart cities, but putting all the stakeholders in the same level of discussion, maybe having uh, governments as the stakeholders that are leading, but doesn't mean that they are in, on the top of the, 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 the relationship. So citizens, NGOs, university, academia is very, very important in this process to hatify and, or, or, and to create the new, the, new, the new technologies and governments and, and citizens, and then at the end of the day, Everyone is a citizen, right? The mayor is a citizen, the, the professor is a citizen, so yeah, it's really important to bring to the human perspective. Renato De Castro, thank you very much. Great pleasure.